Common problems with the transmitters for radio detection is that they don't recognize they don't recognize the leads they're plugged in. So you, this connection socket eventually gets worn out, and it may look like a ring clamp is plugged in instead of their direct connect leads. And so you just need to replace the connection socket with a new one, which is pretty inexpensive cost, but it is a delicate process. There are about oh two dozen of these screws that you need to undo and you need to use a hex screwdriver that is a T9. That, that's what will fit those screws. So there's four on the top first and I unscrew the two on the front here and two behind I just unscrew enough uh, where I can lift up on this after I unscrew all the other ones. You need to lift, be able to lift up on the face um, be able to be able to get to these two screws that are on top here without damaging any of the plastic. So now that I can lift it up just enough, I can unscrew these four screws on the face here, which are basically loosening up the connection socket on the inside. So you got four on the top, you got these four right here. And then um, after you get those all out, just make sure you're putting these in a safe area so they don't get lost because there are so many of them. So a lot of times I'll just use the tray itself, the circle that holds the extension cable. Just throw all the screws in there. And then after you get these four out, you can start on the bottom. You have to remove the battery tray to get to all the screws on the bottom of the transmitter. And one more there. All right, and so remove the battery tray. And you can do that by pushing in on the hinge right here. And it pops out one side, pops out the other side. And now we can remove the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws that are on the bottom and the top will then pop off. All right, so now that we have all those screws on the bottom undone, you just put it against the flat surface and slowly lift up. This is very delicate work, um, so you don't want to be tugging on anything too much because you have three relay cables in here that are powering the unit and also controlling the board. So you have to unplug each one, just pull back on this lighter gray tab here just a little bit and unplug that one first, which is the shortest one. Then you can see you can flip over the top and then these, this here, this relay cable, just pull out on these two blue arms and that releases and this one's just like the first one just pull back on the black or the gray light gray tab there and that one will release and so since i've already undone the four screws from the connection socket on the front you can see that's loose but there's some very small relay cables on this and there's one that powers the actual connection which is down here you can see there's two, two connectors on it two wires and just very easily pull back on it and unplug it. So that's your power to the keypad. And then these two relay cables are released by pulling back on the white part. I don't know if you can see that too well, but get in there. And there's a little white ring on the end that just pulls back. So then you can pull out the relay cable without tearing it. And one down here and pull back on that relay cable and keep, you know, green is further to the bottom and brown is further to the top of the keypad. Just leave them laying hanging there and remove this. So we have another connection socket right here. And you're gonna see that you have to reuse this rainbow colored relay. So we'll go ahead and remove that from this old connection socket and plug it into the new connection socket. Get this untangled. So I'll just plug that right in there. And then we go ahead and put this back in. And I like to go ahead and uh, once you get this in there, make sure you put it in the right way, not upside down. Um, I go ahead and put one screw back in to hold it while I'm plugging in those relay cables. I don't screw all the screws back in yet because uh, you want to make sure everything works before you go through the trouble of having to take it all apart again. But I will go ahead and screw this in. Just so it holds it in place as we're doing all the other work. And then 
we've got to go through the process of putting these relay cables back in. So let me go ahead and pull back on this white halo on that one, this white halo on this one, and we'll start with the one that's deepest in there so we can get to it easy without that other relay cable getting in the way. So just go ahead and slide that in there. Make sure it's in the right slot. Whoops, it came out. So once you, if you have big fingers like me, and this takes a little longer, it takes several tries. Okay, got it in there. Yep, okay, push back on that halo. Make sure everything's solid. Just give it a little slight tug. Make sure it's in there. And then we'll go ahead and do the same on here. Pull that halo out. This one's a lot easier since it's not so deep in there. And then make sure it's in there all the way. And looks like it's crooked a little bit, so I'll pull it back out, straighten it out. There we go. And then slight tug, make sure it's in there. And then plug in my power to the keypad. Uh, that little red and black cable. So that's all plugged in. You can go ahead and put the top on. Proceed to put these relay cables back to where they go. And that just slides in. And when you slide that in, those two arms come around to give it a hug. And go ahead and plug this in. Make sure you plug in this in the right way so the cables are pointed out away from that tab. And Loop it under here so it doesn't has a little more slack to it. Be really careful not to uh, be carrying a static electricity on your person so you don't end up ruining something on this board or get any kind of liquids or anything on this board. And I'll plug that one in right there. Hear the little click, feel the tab go in, and we'll go ahead and put the top on. And I'm just going to put one screw in this to hold the top to the bottom and then put the uh, batteries in and try it before we put all the other screws back in. So, stick the battery tray back on, shut it, and does it turn on? Oh, good. We did something right. And now, turn the volume down. All right, now we'll go ahead and plug in the cables and make sure that it shows the cables plugged in when we when we do that. Yeah, we are good to go. I'll short out the cables, make sure I get a milliamp change. And I do, so everything seems to be working fine. We'll go ahead and install the rest of these four here, install the rest of the three screws in there, and all the other screws on the bottom, and you should be good to go. And so that's how you change a connection socket on a radio detection transmitter.